We're just a couple of weeks away from Halloween, which gives us plenty of time to work on our ghost notes. No? Nothing? Okay. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone if you're still here after that joke. Uh, my name is Rich Brown and, uh, and I'm glad you're still here. Listen, today uh, we're going to be working on something that I've been getting a couple of requests about and that is our ghost notes. Uh, I might do a couple of videos on these because I want to start the beginners off with something very simple. And then maybe in the next video, I'll get into some more syncopated patterns that can really be hip. And also some other percussive elements that we can add to our playing, you know, with the left and right hand doing some cool things. All right, let's get right into it. So what is a ghost note? Well, basically, if I rest my fingers on the strings so that no vibration can happen with any of the strings and then pluck one of those strings, I get this muted sound. And when we incorporate these muted sounds into our bass lines, we're basically playing the ghost notes. That's all there is to it. So here's what I like to do. Uh, when starting off with these uh, sounds, we can just start from the very beginning. And that is by playing the eighth note subdivision at any tempo you want, where the downbeats are going to be a plucked note, and then the upbeats are gonna be ghost notes. So if I play G on the downbeats and go one, two, three, four, then all of those upbeats can be played as ghost notes. So then I have, one and two and three and four. Now what I'm doing here is I'm alternating the fingers. I have, you can start with whatever finger you want. You can start with the second finger and play the ghost notes with the first finger or do the whole thing in reverse. First finger, ghost notes on the middle finger. But this is what I want to get established. Again, Take it at your own tempo, your own pace. So I play the G. The other three fingers on my left hand come up just a tiny bit to get out of the way of that G of that E string. Uh, and then my first finger kind of comes up so that it's not pressing down on the string anymore, but it is on the string to meet the same level of my other three fingers. So they're all just covering the string so I can get this muted sound happening. So just as I have this back and forth motion happening with the right hand, it's almost like I have the same back and forth motion happening on a very small scale with the left hand, where the first finger is playing the note while the other three fingers, three fingers are out of the way of the string. And then the three fingers come down on the string while the first finger comes up just enough to meet where uh, the other three fingers are, if that all makes sense. I hope it does. Uh, this way, you don't get like that kind of thing happening because the more fingers you have covering the string, the less likely you'll hear any vibration or any notes ringing out at all. You'll just hear that muted, that muted note. That's all you want. All right, so you know me, that's not the end of the exercise. Here's what I wanna do with this. We're gonna play the same rhythm. The rhythm is not going to change. What's going to change is the location of our ghost note. This is very cool because again, as I always say, cool things can happen with this. Um, and here's what we're gonna do. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the source of my ghost note. In other words, I'll start by playing that ghost note on the E string. 
and then I'll move the ghost note, just the ghost note, to the A string. So then I get this happening. Like this. So now that back and forth motion with my right hand is even more pronounced because now I'm playing different strings. Whoops, a little aggressive there. And then I can do the same thing and move the ghost note down to the D string. The cool thing about this is I'm not going, I'm not jumping back and forth from string to string. The two fingers are pretty much stationary and then I'm just going and that's kind of rocking motion back and forth between the two fingers. So this is E string, D string. So the G being played on the E string and then the ghost notes being played on the D string. Now when I come up to the A string, you can see what's happening there is I'm, I'm incorporating the rest stroke. What is the rest stroke? Well, that is when I play a note on the A string and then my finger rests right on that E string which allows me to play the note. Um, so then when I'm playing the ghost notes on the A string and plucking the G on the E string, I can essentially play the entire line with one finger. So I have just the second finger playing the line. I hope you can see that. So you'll find that as you do this, as you move the source of the ghost notes, you'll find uh, different comfort levels and different advantages to where you're placing the ghost notes. Cool things can happen. You know, it's a great string skipping exercise as well. If you're going to be playing the note, the G on the E string and then playing the ghost note on the D string, you're, you know, you're doing a great string skipping exercise where you're practicing that motion. That's such a cool sound. I could play that all day. <laughs> okay, friends and neighbors, here's what we're now going to do with this exercise. Um, we're going to flip the rhythm where before we had the G being played right on the downbeat. And then all the ghost notes were on the upbeats. We're going to flip that now. So that all the ghost notes are on the downbeats. Huh? And then the G is going to be played on all of the upbeats. Now that might sound a little bit weird, but essentially we're getting into Larry Graham world. You know that Sly and the Family Stone tune, uh, Everyday People? This is the bass line. So again, um, muted notes, ghost notes on the downbeats. And then G, good and strong, on those upbeats. Right? So, sounds like this. Uh, one, two, three, four. So cool. And then if you want. Huh? How about that? Come on now. So that's the line. So now we can do the same thing. Let's move the source of our ghost note. Move it down to the uh, A string and then move it down to the D string. Just to see what that feels like, what it does to the line and to the groove when we move things around in this way. I mean, the differences are going to be very subtle and they might only be noticeable to you. But again, we're sort of establishing where the comfort zone is going to be and where things really feel like nice and in the pocket. For me, I tend to uh, favor the, the ghost notes on the string below. In other words, if I'm playing this line, 
I might play the ghost notes on the A string and then pluck those G's on the E string. Now so, which gives me the ability to play the line with one finger. It also gives me the ability to really, to really hammer that downbeat so that I'm getting a bit more uh, dynamic range in my, in my line so that the downbeat, the ghost note, is going to be a little bit louder. So it's not really a ghost note at that point, I guess. Uh, and then the, the G that I'm playing can be a little more subtle. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to now play the line and then move the ghost notes to the different strings. So we'll start with the ghost notes on the E string, move them down to the A string, and then move them down to the D string. Uh, you could move them down to the G, but there are a couple of issues with that. One is the physical distance between those two strings uh, might not make for the most comfort. Two, the G string is a lot thinner than the other strings. So the, that percussive sound might be a little too thin and not as, uh, not as powerful. So here, we start with the line. Ghost notes on the E string. I'll do that again, and then I'll move the ghost notes to the A string. A string. Now I'll move the ghost notes to the D string. I love all three of these. Now I'll come back down. A string. And then E string. And that's that. All right, my friends and neighbors, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, a nice simple lesson for this week and uh, hopefully something that everyone can enjoy and at least understand. And if you do get into working on this exercise and you start to move those ghost notes around, let me know in the comments section um, which string is most comfortable for you. It's going to change for different people. Some people like playing the ghost notes on the same note, or sorry, on the same string as the notes that they're playing. Some people like me like to play those uh, ghost notes on the string below to allow for those rest strokes to happen with the right hand. And some people just like to have that, that distance between the two strings and really work that sound. Which category do you fall into? That is my question. Hey, listen, if you like this video, uh, please do me a huge favor and click like. You can also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to let you know when I'll be releasing new videos on this channel. And if you are so inclined and in a position to do so, you can donate to the channel in one of two ways. I will leave a donation link in the description box. And you also have the option of joining the channel, which really helps me out for a small fee of $5 a month. That $5 a month uh, allows access to exclusive forums that only happen for members and some other little perks where, you know, you might have more access to me as far as questions and future content on this channel. All of the above helps me out in a huge way and I do appreciate all of it. The comments, the donations, the likes, I love it all. And I thank you all for being a part of this and helping me out with these videos. It is a pleasure and an honor to bring them to you. And I will leave it at that, my friends and neighbors. Peace and love, and I will see you in the next video.